Hey, Nicole, how you doing? All right, here's your trial by fire banana. Okay, so let's see. Now, the first thing we see, I see is, I, I notice a lot of smudges on the paper. So remember, Nicole, craft counts here. You wanna be as neat as you possibly can. The next thing I notice is this baseline right here isn't level. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna grab this document right now. I just wanted to use the top of this document for a straight edge. When we place it right there, we can see that that, whoops. I'm gonna place it right where the baseline starts, right there, and we can see the baseline kind of slants up this way. Let's check the mean line. Mean line seems to be pretty straight, and then the cap line is definitely straight. So that baseline is is not level, and the re that's why this letter banana, the word banana, kind of looks like it's going like this, getting smaller as we read through the letters, because it is, because this uh, baseline isn't level. If this baseline were level, obviously I think this would reach down a little bit, and it would be more consistent. As as we see now, each letter subsequently becomes smaller than its predecessor. So the first thing you want to do is establish a, a, a perfectly level baseline, then establish a perfectly level mean line and cap line that are per perfectly parallel with the baseline. Once those guys are set, those guides are set, you can start establishing your letter forms. And I think your letter forms are pretty consistent, but when we talk about uh, consistency in, in the uh, horizontal. We also want consistency in the vertical. So for example, right here, we'll use that straight edge again. This time we'll use this side of the straight edge. I'm going to place it right there at the top of the end. And you can see the that space between the top of the end right there. So this is definitely on an angle here. And we'll do the same thing over here. I'll place that at the bottom of the end so we can see that space right there indicates another slant. We don't want these to be slanted, right? right? They need to be straight as depicted in the letter form. See how that's straight all the way up to where it curves, but right now yours is on a slant or a diagonal, if you will. So you definitely want to pay attention to the consistency therein. Now, let's talk about letter spacing. First of all, letter spacing is important because it establishes a good cadence for reading. It allows us to depict words as words and not groups of letters. So we see the word banana, when it's, when it's spaced correctly, the mind perceives it as banana. If there are any unusual spaces here, let's say a Let's say the space between the A and the N here is unusually wide. The mind wants to go banana, so you, as opposed to banana. So you can see how it, the, it slows down the reading process. Okay, that's why letter spacing is so important. All right, I think you've got you're really close. Your letter spacing is pretty tight here, so I would recommend we open it up a little bit. Now, in terms of the space between letters, they're not. You, you want to follow this formula. The, the idea here is that we establish the same volume between letter forms, okay? So let's ignore this open counter right here and just pretend that goes right down there. And we take a look at the letter forms, the, the, the counter space between the letter forms. Imagine you're pouring a pitcher of water in there. And again, there's a line right here, right? Imagine you're pouring a pitcher of water in there. Okay, how fast would it full, fill up? Would it fill up faster or slower than the space if we were to pour a, a simultaneous pitcher of water right in here and one right in here? This would fill up faster because there's less space here, right? So we want them to fill up equally as we fill up. So suppose you're filling up each space in between letters with water. You want them to fill up evenly, right? Um, and of course, yeah, again, I, you have to ignore this this closed counter, this open counter right here in the lowercase a. So the the generally the general rule of thumb is this, and it's very intuitive when you think about it. So um, since we want this volume to be the same as this volume, all right, then we got this is a different shape. It's got more area to it, right? So we would want to close down the space here. In this case, I think this is fine as it is. We don't want to close it anymore because you don't want those letters to touch, but. We want this volume to be the same as this, meaning we would need to increase the space oh, between these two letter forms, all right? Following that reasoning, here's your formula. You want the closest spacing between to, to be between two curved letter forms, followed by the next closest spacing being between a straight letter form and a curved letter form, and then the widest letter spacing to be, be be between two straight letter forms. And if you follow the reasoning, you can see that that all follows just this, this, this intent to want to establish good consistency in the volume in, uh, of the counter space between the letter forms. Okay, so that is the general rule of thumb. That's what I want you to follow. And those are my recommendations for your final submission. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. But, but I would like to see those um, those comments reflected in your final submission, which is due this Sunday. Okay, so Nicole, I'm really, really good about getting back immediately to students. You won't wait for me if you have questions. So if you do have any questions, just feel free. I'll be, be glad to address any uh, necessary clarifications. All right, great start, Nicole. Thanks so much for sharing.